all right all right ladies and gentlemen you are welcome to another great episode on your favorite political talk show the truth with ben jokes now i would be an irredeemable hypocrite if i sit down here and tell you that this country is not in serious trouble so i can be seen as an optimist the truth cannot be staring me in the face and you expect me to report something else in the last 72 hours more than 100 farmers have been killed by bandits in this country under the APC. These are the ones on record though. And when we talk about bandits killing farmers, it is no longer news. But more than 100 in 72 hours across three states is very unusual, especially the case of Nanja State. If you recall, there was a meeting where Peter Obi spoke about the agricultural potential of Nanja State, how Nanja State can feed the entire Nigeria if its agricultural potential is well explored. And you would recall that the Niger State Governor Mohamed Bago was at that same meeting and he said to Peter Obi, he said, my boss, you keep telling us the truth, but we don't listen. Thank you for your knowledge. That was what he said to Peter Obi and APC people began criticizing the governor after that meeting, but he said what he said. And after that day, the governor of Nanja State, Muhammadu Bago, began working on what Peter Obi said about his state. And a few weeks ago, he began something like an agricultural revolution in Nanja State. But do you know that in these last three weeks, more than 50 farmers have been killed in Nanja? And it is becoming clear that there is a grand plan by some powerful forces to cut off food supply in Nigeria. And the APC is part of that conspiracy. What they are aiming at, we don't know yet, but it is now clear that there is a conspiracy to severely cut off food supply in this country. Maybe it's because they are trying to introduce GMOs to make us accept them by force. I'm not sure yet, but there is a conspiracy. But for every action, they are mostly equal but opposite reaction. The reactions of Northern Nigeria to these incessant killings sponsored by the APC and these other forces might push this country into a war. Northern clerics have started giving directives to northerners. I mean, they are gathering them in large groups and issuing this directive that can send this country into the kind of chaos that we have never seen before. Before I show you this directive and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this video by international journalist Donu Kogbara. Kogbara, describing the Tinubu regime, said, Everybody she knows is fed up with the regime. See the video. I think we can safely say that they have not met anybody's expectations except someone who is a sycophant or delusional. Um, now, it may not entirely be their fault. I, I don't know the constraints they're working under. Um, one or two of them are my personal friends and... I have a lot of hope that they will get to perform adequately. But quite frankly, the protests that took place recently say it all really. Nigerians are not happy. Just because old cargoes like me didn't hit the streets with placards doesn't mean to say that all the recent discontent is purely, you know, the, the preserve of irresponsible young people or, you know, Peter Obi supporters. Everybody I know, almost everybody, is fed up. You heard that. That was Donu Kogbara, an international journalist, spitting facts there. The APC have this habit of hiding under the popularity of Peter Obi to divert the attention of Nigerians from their failures. Each time anyone calls out the failure of the APC, they will quickly say the person is a Peter Obi supporter. He is angry that Peter Obi was not declared winner. If that is the case, then they are clearly admitting that Obi actually won the election because more than 90% of Nigerians are complaining now. We are now saying that all of them are Obi supporters. After the end bad governance protest, you know, ended on the 10th of August, we have seen 10 other protests across different states in this country. And there will be more to come. Today, the 24th of August makes it exactly one year that Tinubu appointed his ministers. And what have they contributed to the Nigerian people? What can we say the ministers have done that has improved the lives of Nigerians? 
only the minister of interior can be said to have put in a decent performance minister of interior olubun Ojo is the only one should we talk about how many millions of dollars nigeria lost to the stupidity of the minister of works dave umahi or the minister of sports that presided over an olympic team that couldn't win a single medal they didn't return home with a single medal is that the minister you tell me he's performing the Minister of Defense has to be the worst with the increasing insecurity all across the country. And can you tell me one thing the Minister of Agri has done to improve that sector? Or is it Minister of Power presiding over a powerless ministry? Or should we talk about the Minister of Petroleum, which is Tinobu himself? Fuel scarcity everywhere in Nigeria is getting to like three weeks now. 850 naira, 900 naira, 1,200 naira. That is the amount people are buying petrol in this country. So tell me that the Minister of Petroleum has not failed woefully. I am waiting for you in the comment section. Come and tell me a minister that is performing so well, aside the Minister of Interior, Olubu Miojo. I'm waiting for you. Now, on to the next update. You see, Nigeria is already sitting on a keg of gunpowder. But Northern clerics now, reacting to these killings that took place in the last two weeks in Northern Nigeria, have started issuing a directive that may drive this country into unimaginable chaos. This directive is not exactly wrong. It's not as if it is wrong like that. But it has the potential of bringing us into serious chaos. Look at how the papers reported it. Buy guns and other types of weapons you can get. Islamic cleric urges Nigerians to protect themselves against terrorists amid government failure. A Nigerian Islamic scholar and cleric, Muhammad Belu Aliu Yabo, popularly known as Belu Yabo, has called on Nigerians to take proactive measures in safeguarding themselves and their families amid escalating terrorist threats in the northern part of the country. Yabo, while addressing a congregation in the north, stressed the importance of self-defense and urged citizens to equip themselves with arms as a necessary step for protection against increasing terrorist activities. Reacting to the killing of Alhaji Isa Muhammad Bawa, the Serkin Gobiri of Gatawa district in the Sabon Brini local government area, Sokoro State, Yabo said, those who can afford to buy weapons should do so. Go and buy guns or any other type of weapon you can manufacture. Go ahead and produce them. How can you stand by and watch a criminal invade your house, abduct your wife or kidnap you while he uses his weapon to control you? He added that since the government is supplying weapons to the terrorists, people should also seek out weapons to defend themselves. After everyone has obtained their weapons, let everyone come out and face them. Since they cannot kill everyone at once, why should we allow these criminals to eliminate us? Look at the audacity of the terrorists blocking roads and telling everyone to pack. Has everyone become so powerless? Is there no resistance to be offered? May God ease our affairs, he said. Sheikh Yabo is from Yabo local government area in Sokoto State, Nigeria. Meanwhile, Sheikh Yabo was a critic of former President Muhammad Buhari for his handling of insecurity in northern Nigeria, particularly in Zamfara, Sokoto, Kaduna, Katsina, and Nanja State. You heard that. Now, in all honesty, Sheikh Yabo actually made a lot of sense in his call to northern Nigeria and other parts of Nigeria to defend themselves. He said people should buy guns and manufacture guns if they can to defend themselves. But we cannot refuse to talk about the danger of a northern Nigeria littered with guns. What happens when religious agitations and altercations begin? We know that this is a very volatile region. Many will use those same guns for purposes beyond self-defense. That one is not even up for debate. You know that will happen. Can you see the danger that the corruption of the APC is said to bring upon Nigerians? These guys are about to drive us into a war. And you know how northerners are with their clerics, especially with this particular one, Sheikh Yabo, who supported the protest. 
since he backed protesters, he has his reputation intact. They still respect him. It is those who refuse to back the protest that, that they went against. This man, he still has his reputation intact. His words still carry weight in northern Nigeria. And I'm telling you, there are people who would leave that meeting with him, that gathering, and immediately start looking for guns to buy. Those who can manufacture will start manufacturing. Is this country not going to descend into a war under the APC like this? Many may argue that we are already at war, but I'm talking about something worse because many Nigerians from South, East and West totally agreed with what Sheikh Yabo said. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Let's take some of the tweet reactions. And this tweet here by Babanla says, War is coming because everyone owning guns would mean a catastrophe, but it is really needed. Mm. This tweet here by Avocado says, as much as I don't support violence, but if you don't defend yourself, no one will come through for you. Our system has failed us. That is just the truth. The system has failed. But if everybody should now carry a gun, how about the dangers that will come from that one? Look at the confusion that the APC has brought upon us. Insecurity is something that we can easily tackle with a transparent government, a good government. But look at where these guys are driving us to. A chaotic situation that will be totally out of control. And this tweet by Abubakar Ali says, If government cannot protect citizens, citizens need to protect themselves. Definitely, definitely. But, wow, there is problem, my people. And this tweet by Lola Olua here says, I like where this is going. Insecurity will not reduce if the indigents don't rise up in arms against them. Mm. And Engineer Yasiru says, I am with Sheikh Belo Yabo on this. The government, by all standards, has failed in its primary responsibility to protect the lives and properties of its citizens. The people need to rise against those who have made life miserable for them because they illegally acquired arms. I am not against that. In fact, I have been preaching that people should defend themselves. But as people are defending themselves, let us try if we can ensure that we don't begin attacking ourselves with these same weapons that we have used to defend ourselves. It is very important that that aspect be put into as much consideration as the aspect of self-defense. And this tweet here by Optimus says, If you don't buy, idiots will humiliate you, your wife and daughters in your presence, and police cannot help. The choice is yours either way. Oh! But Eze here disagrees with the cleric. He said, Islamic cleric are about to ignite a war in Nigeria. Which one is everybody should buy guns? They should not buy anything. India party, you breed the python swallowing you all. Why good luck a Billy Jonathan is enjoying his, his retirement somewhere? Politics will destroy you all and it is on it already. Mm. Aminu Mewada also disagrees with the cleric. He says, DSS and other security agencies over to you. But Hassan Baba says, for what and on what basis? So there is a disagreement here. Some people don't believe that guns should be owned by all Nigerians. But many people, over 90% of the people who commented, seem to agree with the Sheikh. And Abdullahi Idris says, Northern Nigeria has become defenseless under Tinubu. It's such a shame. It's such a shame that when we were telling these guys to unanimously kick the APC out of power, I know many of them voted against the APC, but it was not unanimous enough. If it was, these guys would have been out of power. And by now, we would have been working on, you know, building a new Nigeria. But look at where we are 50 years backwards. This is so pathetic. And this tweet here says, you are waking up late, but it is better you wake up from slumber anyway you have seen that a northern campaign for northerners to buy guns those who can produce guns those who can manufacture guns should begin manufacturing guns so a time will come when the average nigerian will now have if you can recall senator ned Unwoko, the other day raised that bill in the senate that nigerians should be allowed to carry guns because terrorists are carrying guns anyhow this is where we are getting to under the APC. Like play, like play. 
this thing will come to stay and everybody will begin to wield guns. And I dread to, to even think about the kind of society we would have when over 60% of Nigerians will wield guns. We might now eventually defeat insecurity, but we may have another demon on our hands. And that is the situation that I want to avoid here. And I'm saying that with good leadership, Nigeria can easily defeat insecurity. It is not as difficult as the APC makes it seem. It is because they are working with them that it looks as if these guys are insurmountable. And that is why I keep telling Nigerians that we must come together and unite to kick these guys out of power and we will be able to take our country back. But until then, make I still enter town. <laughs> Make I go get some Ogbonge political news where we na go like. Why? Because now because of now. Now I day here, so don't go away. Don't go. Away.